economy currently, financial system currently face, and what does that really mean for U.S.-China economic relations? How can we use the U.S.-China relations? The day is going to come when the United States and China will be the two countries that are going to have to try to provide leadership in some way. And we certainly reached the point in the world today where they have these enormously transnational Usually consequential transnational issues like climate change, nuclear proliferation, and the like. President Clinton's view was that the best way for the United States to make progress on all of the various issues that it had with respect to China was to engage with China and help in the process of China becoming part of the global economic and social community, and that's what he did, and that's what we did, he did for his whole eight years. The best way forward, the way forward that is most likely to be effective, is the one that he talked about back then which the United States and China working together to provide leadership in the global community. I think if the U.S. and China had not moved forward together in the conversations on climate change, it would have been virtually impossible to get to the Paris Agreement and to have Paris uh, go into effect. The bilateral relationship between the United States and China, and China was obviously much less of an economy in those days, was going to become the most important relationship we had, and it certainly has become that. You have to be able to put yourself in the other person's shoes, and you have to be able to demonstrate some capacity to appreciate where they're coming from, what shapes their values, what shapes their interests. I wouldn't think in terms of trying to lever China. I would think in terms of trying to work with them so we each see what each other's problems are and then reach some kind of common understanding about addressing them. We each need to understand each other and understand the problems that we have with each other and then try to work on them as people who are engaged in a constructive relationship. Where we put a very clear analytic uh, frame out there to determine whether or not countries warrant enhanced scrutiny uh, and whether uh, there needs to be uh, any action uh, taken. Um, I think that those are the right criteria to use and I think one of the key criteria is, is the country intervening uh, to try and gain unfair advantage uh, in terms of the value of its currency and I think objectively over the last year, uh, China has been doing the opposite. To the extent that they've been intervening, they've been intervening uh, at their own expense to protect their currency. Three quarters of the time we spent with the Chinese leadership at that time were trying to figure out ways we could cooperate together in helping bring the world out of that crisis more, more quickly. If China really had a, a, an economic crisis and as a consequence, the currency plummeted, that would put tremendous pressure on emerging market countries around the world to depreciate their currencies, and then you could be off to a global currency war.